So Cyberpunk 2077 is finally here natively on Mac and it runs shockingly well. But what is the best Mac to play it on? Today we're going to be comparing four different Macs running this game, looking at the benchmarks and seeing how they perform. And we're also going to be looking at 4K gameplay with ray tracing, path tracing and frame generation. We'll be doing a direct benchmark comparison across all devices, how controller support performs and whether HDR makes an actual difference. And we'll be doing a comparison between how this new Mac port stacks up with the Windows version running through crossover. And finally I'll be telling you where to actually buy this game should you be getting it from the Mac App Store or you might already own it on Steam, GOG or Epic. And if you're wondering about Metal 4 support as well as Metal Frame Interpolation then make sure to watch until the end of this video. So first up let's talk about the M4 chip. So here we've got the MacBook Pro with the standard M4 chip with 10 GPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And here we're running the game through what's called the For This Mac setting. And this allows the developer to set predetermined settings based on which Mac configuration you're using. This includes target FPS, frame rate cap, resolution and other other graphics settings too. On this standard M4 chip what it'll basically do is set dynamic resolution scaling to be turned on and it's going to be targeting 30 fps. And this isn't necessarily a bad move. Capping to 30 means that we have more stability, we have less thermal throttling and the MacBook Pro M4 can easily hit this resolution and graphics settings at 30 fps. However if you're feeling more ambitious uh, what I've done is I've raised the dynamic resolution scaling cap to 120 fps and turned off vSync and at this setting we're getting close to that 60 fps mark more like hovering between 45 and 55. Combat in the open world also seem to work fine at this setting. Now technically the M4 generation of chips supports hardware ray tracing. So here I'm testing out ray tracing ultra. This doesn't include path tracing but nevertheless this ultra setting is bringing this M4 down to its knees. Realistically ray tracing is something that will never happen on these base chips partly because there's simply not enough GPU power in these integrated graphics. However there is a machine that can handle this. So this is my MacBook Pro with the N3 Max chip with 40 GPU cores. So literally four times more GPU cores than the M4 that I was testing. Now personally, I'm not a huge fan of ray tracing, especially in its current form. I just don't think that the graphical quality improvements are worth the massive performance hit that you're gonna get. And there's also another setting that you can try too, ray tracing overdrive, which activates path tracing. Now personally, I just can't really see a huge difference. Cyberpunk 2077 already has really good baked in lighting effects already. And so for me, path tracing, all it does is just makes the Mac really slow. And that's because games aren't just for looking at, they're not just pretty videos, they're made for playing and you don't want too much input lag caused by massive graphics settings. Here what I've done is I've taken the default for this Mac setting at 1080p. It's still meant to be targeting 60 FPS but I basically uncapped the frame rate via VSync and it seems to work at a pretty good frame rate. And yes, one thing worth mentioning is that this laptop has pretty good active cooling. So I did check the thermal temperatures and I didn't see too many issues with this running at this setting. I did test this for quite a long time. We seem to be running at decent temperatures as well. And as a higher end M3 Max, we are capable of driving this game at high resolution. So this is 4K running with Metal FX quality upscaling. Here I'm just doing a comparison with the 4K frame rates running with Metal FX off, Metal FX turned on to quality mode, and then with FSR 3.1 frame generation turned on. Now the bottom panel with frame gen on is substantially worse in terms of frame timing. And when I actually play the game with frame gen turned on, it didn't actually feel that good, it felt a bit jittery. Now Cyberpunk is gonna be updated in the future to Metal 4 features, including Metal Frame interpolation. This is going to come later in the year so this isn't available right now. You're going to need macOS Tahoe in order to use these features as well. Next I'm going to talk quickly about the M1 MacBook Air. So this is the base M1 chip with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores and technically speaking this is an unsupported device. In order to play this game CD Projekt Red require you to have 16 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum. But as you can see it's actually possible to boot up this game. Here we're using the For This Mac setting and I've actually lowered this down to 720p. It actually defaulted to 900p and it's running at a 30 FPS cap. However frequently the game will just slow down and stutter for no particular reason and it's basically because this Mac just doesn't have enough RAM to be able to run this game. Now if you want to find out more I've actually made a dedicated video about running this on an unsupported Mac with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM. So make sure to click on the link for that in the description. And the next Mac we're looking at is the higher end M1 chip. So this is the M1 Max and it has four times more RAM than the base M1 MacBook Air and crucially four times the number of GPU cores. So again, the for this Mac setting tries to target that 60 FPS mark. However, here what I've done is I've turned this onto 1080p high and then set metal effects to quality mode. In these interior mission levels, we're getting about 70 to 90 FPS. And here I'm doing some 
combat in the open world and we're hitting about 60 to 70 FPS. So not too bad considering that there's a lot of NPCs here and we're fighting in the open world areas. So next up, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between all of these mechs running the 1080p high benchmark. Here we've got Metal FX turned off. So we've got no upscaling here. This is basically the raw resolution of 1080p being tested at the moment. Now we've always known that the higher end Macs are going to be able to run this game pretty well. However, I'm pretty happy that the base M4, which is basically in every single M4 of this generation, is able to achieve playable frame rates. So technically 1080p high is going to be higher than the for this Mac setting. So even though that Mac is only getting about 26 FPS, once optimizations are in place, then the frame rate's going to be higher. And really upscaling is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in order to achieve these optimizations. So with Metal Effects turned on to quality mode, which is actually running the game at 720p and using algorithms to upscale to 1080p, is actually allowing a lot of these games to have playable frame rates. Although in this comparison, the M1 MacBook Air is obviously struggling really hard. So next up, let's talk about controller support. So here I'm quite glad to report that this has excellent dual sense support. Adaptive triggers seem to work really well. There aren't many games that support this specific feature on Mac and the controller icons are represented correctly in game. And I also wanted to show you HDR support, which looks beautiful on MacBook Pro screens. You can't really tell how good this game looks until you see it in person being played on a beautiful Apple display. But I can assure you, it looks like one of the best HDR implementations of a game on a Mac so far. And lastly, I want to talk about comparisons between running the Windows version through crossover versus running the Mac port. Now, the fact is that some people might be a little bit disappointed that the native version of Cyberpunk doesn't perform that much better than the Windows version. Here we're doing a little bit of testing on the base M4 chip in my MacBook Pro, and we're only seeing about a three FPS difference, which is maybe about 15% improvement with the native port. Now, I actually think that this is more of a testament to how well crossover and D3D Metal work on a Mac. It really feels like the D3D Metal project was designed to work with Cyberpunk 2077 and built for performance for this particular game. Real improvements are seen in CPU bound environments because a natively coded game is not going to be using the Rosetta 2 translation layer and it's going to be more optimized. You should be able to see this if you run games at much lower resolutions, but you'd really kind of have to engineer those benchmarks quite artificially. So I'm leaving link in the description to a couple of Reddit posts which show that the native port of Cyberpunk has an uplift anywhere between 30% to 88.4% which is quite impressive and at the end of the day there's basically no reason to play the Windows version through crossover anymore and if you already own the Windows version of the game on Steam, on Epic or on GOG then you've automatically got the Mac port included and you probably shouldn't buy it from the Mac App Store for some reason it's 159 gigabytes because it includes all of the voiceover languages whereas the Steam version is only 92 gigabytes and also the game there is kind of crazy expensive. The cheapest place is actually to buy this from the GOG website. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. It's 65% off until the 24th of July 2025. So Cyberpunk 2077 runs incredibly well natively on the Mac but performance still really depends on which Mac you have and the fact is that Apple is just getting started with Cyberpunk 2077. Metal 4 features are due to be implemented after macOS Tahoe is released. This includes Metal 4, Metal FX frame interpolation, which is basically their version of frame generation. And more and more work is being implemented to make sure this game runs as well as possible on a Mac. So now that one of the biggest ever gaming titles has finally landed natively on Mac, what does this all mean? Is this going to be a signal for other developers and publishers to put their AAA native games on the Mac platform? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.